Alright everyone, welcome back to R slash Fat Logic. It's been a while since we covered this. Uh, the animal that you're looking at right now, their name is Patch. I believe it's a girl. I don't know, because my grandmother keeps changing her cat's gender, so sometimes they're boys, sometimes they're girls, and I don't know what they're actually <laughs> what they are. This is Patch, I believe it's a girl. And uh Patch hates everyone. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and start with our slash fat logic. Uh, I'm guessing Dr. Malpractice ND is in fact Fat Doctor UK. That would be my guess. Did you know that there is no real evidence that weight loss improves long-term health outcomes? Even when you go looking for it, researchers can't find it. Can you believe that? Weight loss is universally recommended as part of health promotion without any evidence. It works. So this is a just an outright lie. We've seen with some of the studies that we've looked at with Fat Doctor UK how the outcomes of those studies showed improvement in like blood pressure, cholesterol levels, that sort of thing. So it does improve health. We know that to up to a healthy weight, as long as you aren't like underweight, weight loss helps when you are obese, morbidly obese, or even overweight. There is benefit, and just even if we take aside, take out like those measures, and uh, we look at some anecdotal evidence, again, me, I'm sorry, it's, I know my own experience best, but when I lost weight, my issues with my back almost completely went away. Like, I still sometimes have issues with it if I don't, like, do proper lifting mechanics. By and large, my issues with my back have completely subsided now that I lost 20 pounds for when they were at their worst when I was nearly 200. Okay, so not quite 20 pounds, 15 pounds, but still, it made a difference. It made a difference. I My back doesn't hurt as much anymore, and the same goes for when you lose weight and you have joint pain. Often when you lose weight, your joint pain lessens. Your joint pain lessens. It's it's just one of those things. Weight, especially with musculoskeletal issues, can have a big impact. And I think that this saying, even when they go looking for it, researchers can't find it, which just is worded weird. And there's no real evidence. So that's that's another operative word that we have. What defi What do they define as real evidence? I'm curious about that. Because if this is, in fact, Fat Doctor UK, we've seen that their evidence is often over a decade old. Sometimes multiple decades old. So, this is just an outright lie. Uh, I think people who buy steel clothes clearly made for plus-size people and destroy them to make them fit should be hunted for sport. This is a serious fucking take. Like, this is a violent take. For something that is really not that big of a deal. Like, if you're going thrifting, you get what works for you. Like, depending on how you will upcycle things. There's plenty of, like, massively large clothes that go un unbought. They don't, they aren't taken, and they end up in a landfill. So, to say that it's someone's fault because you couldn't find something at a thrift store when they're shopping at a completely different thrift store is just fucking, fucking bonkers. And I think this is such a bad take, and I think that you think they should be hunted for sport is, like, is a really, I mean, it really reflects on you the level of entitlement that you feel to control other people's actions. This one says, the reason why so many thin people react so incredibly badly to fat acti activism, aka the idea that fat people are also people, is because they formed a part of their personal identity around being a good person where good equals thin. And then forgot they did that. So, no. <laughs> Just no. Uh, a lot of people react badly to fat activism, uh, which is not... Let's take this first. Fat, fat activism, a.k.a. the idea that fat people are also people. No, that's not the way fat activism is presented in most spaces. Fat activism is presented in ways that buying larger clothes from the thrift store is seen as just, like, a horrible thing to do. Before and after photos are, like, a form of violence and discrimination. 
talking about bodily insecurities when you're thinner but think that you look fat is is somehow fat phobic. Clothes retailers not carrying up to a size 30 is a form of discrimination. That not having um, represented like fat characters as a form of representation is also a form of discrimination. This is not this is not the way anything works. And I think also people have a really big issue with people putting the fat activists putting fat phobia as on tier with racism, homophobia, ableism, so on and so forth. That's the big issue that people have with fat activism. It's not about being, that being thin is a matter of being a good person. That's what you guys tell yourselves in order to justify what you continue to say. But if you actually listen to your detractors, the big issue is, is that you are trying to control people. You are trying to control their behaviors and what they can post online that is just about them and about their lives. The fact that they're on a weight loss journey for many of you is a, a crime against fatness or something. The trying to police thoughts by saying if you don't find fat people attractive, you're fat phobic. You are trying to create morality around everything regarding being fat. If you just want to be treated as a person and you don't think that harassment is okay, which I agree, you shouldn't harass people in any form, then more people would be on your side. But you are trying to say so many things are harassment, are bullying when they are not. You are trying to control what people do in their everyday lives. You are trying to control people's speech. If someone says, I feel fat, you create that as a equivalent to a racial slur or something. You guys take everything to the nth degree to try to legitimize your, your movement or something. And all it does is alienate you and put more people against you. And then you say, you try to twist it to say that if you're against fat activism, it's because you see being thin as being a good person. And that's not the case. Exercise, especially cardio, is fat phobic enough. So at least have the common courtesy of doing it in private. This way, it is only your psyche that gets damaged. Hashtag cardio, hashtag microaggression. This is what I'm fucking talking about. Cardio is apparently fat phobic. Walking is fat phobic. Running is fat phobic. Doing any form, bike riding, any form of cardio is fat phobic. And not only that, but you should not be doing it in public. This is what I mean about trying to police every, like, normal things that people do. Reasonable things that people do. If I want to go out for a bike ride or go running or whatever, I should not have to be confined to my house to do a normal action. Let's say someone's running to try to catch a bus or something. Is that fat phobic too? Because they're doing cardio. Like, I, 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 this sounds facetious, but I am genuinely curious from this perspective. Where is the cutoff line for cardio? Because humans do cardio as part of their daily lives. So where's the cutoff line for cardio? When, like, and apparently all exercise. So if you are, so if we're going that route, then does that include physical therapy too? Fuck you for trying to recover from an injury and doing the strength training to get the strength back in your arms, back in your legs, or what have you. Fuck you for walking on the treadmill at a slow pace to try to help with your back. Because that's, that's something that was in my physical therapist's office with some people that had back injuries, is that they were to go on a slow walk to warm up their body, even if they had back issues and stuff, because the movement helped with the back muscles. But is that fat phobic too? Is that, is that fat phobic? And the fact that you viewing exercise and especially cardio as damaging to your psyche and a microaggression tells me that you have some deep seated issues that you need to go to therapy for because it's not normal. Humans do cardio just as part of daily life. Like, it's not even necessarily specific exercise. If you have an active job, you're likely doing cardio. Do they not understand that? Is it just if you're at the gym? Like, people shouldn't be able to go on the treadmills at the gym? Because that's... Uh, do you find gyms traumatic? Like, just looking at a gym and seeing the people running inside. Does that trigger your psyche, really? Or are you trying to be a victim and a martyr? Or do you have a genuine issue that rather than trying to put it off on anyone else, you should go to therapy for and work it out? Just, just wondering.
Do you understand how many fat people don't use needed mobility aids because of the violence they would face for existing in public and becoming essentially housebound? How many people lose limbs and organs because doctors tell them to lose weight rather than running the test they would run on a thin person? How many die of medical neglect? How many people are violently restrained or literally killed because their fat bodies are seen as a threat during meltdowns or mental health crises? The intersection of fatness and disability is literally deadly. Thin people face ableism, yes, but your experiences of disability are far from universal. All right. So, do you understand how many fat people don't use mobility aids because of the violence they would face for existing in public and because and become essentially housebound? I don't think that's the reason why most fat people don't use mobility aids cuz I have um, an elderly family member that is desperately needs to use a walker, but she refuses. Uh, she says it's because she doesn't want to get to a point where she can't move without it, but she really can't move. She's constantly falling. She can't really move without it. Now, it if anything, using the walker would reduce her injury rate. But she's I think what it is is that she's embarrassed, and I think that follows suit with a lot of morbidly obese people that need mobility aids, is that they understand that that is... That people will connect their weight with their mobility aid because it's it's probably what caused their need for a mobility aid. It's embarrassment, and I'm sorry that they feel embarrassed, and I'm sorry that they are, like, uber conscious of what other people think of them, but the answer would be, this is not what causes them to become housebound. Most significantly um, overweight, like the morbidly obese people that I've seen that are housebound are severely overweight. That what causes them to become housebound is not shame, it is their weight. How many people lose limbs and organs because doctors tell them to lose weight rather than running the test they would run on a thin person? So there is some legitimacy to that argument for people with like, there was that uterine cancer story where the doctor told them to lose weight and they had uterine cancer and it went untreated until it caused it became significantly more progressive or progressed a significant way so it is a bit of a concern i don't know about this losing limbs and the organs thing i don't i don't really know about either of those quite frankly if you were to lose a limb I would think that the your weight probably contributed to that to some extent. But I don't know. How many die of medical neglect? I think, again, neglect has to do with, like, willful ignoring of another person's pain. I don't think it's neglect. I think doctors really do try their best with the information that they have at the time, given their expertise. I don't think it's medical neglect so much as they had an idea of what it was in their mind and they turned out to be wrong. That happens. How many people are violently restrained or literally killed because their fat bodies are seen as a threat during meltdowns and mental health crises? I would like citation on this because this makes, I've never seen this, never heard of this. I don't understand this at all. I, I would like to know where this is coming from personally, because I never, I don't really know what they're referring to here. The intersection of fatness and disability is literally deadly. Thin people face ableism, yes, but your experiences of disability are far from universal. So the issue, so this is again them turning their situation into special snowflake territory. And I don't really like using that, but that I can't think of a better term right now, where... Yes, we both experience ableism, but I have it worse. It's always they have it worse. They are the biggest victim. They are the biggest martyr. They experience the most discrimination. They have the hardest lives. That seems to be like an ongoing thing with the FAs is that their life is hardest and no one understands and everyone ignores them and they are just victims. And I think this is one of the things that works against them the most for me is I hate this because I, I know some people in my life that always do this, that no matter what you're experiencing, they always have it worse. And it gets exhausting after a while and frustrating. And eventually, yes, you fucking ignore them. Because everything is a catastrophe. 
everything you can't experience anything worse than what they've experienced it's they talk about invalidation yet they invalidate others all the fucking time and this is our last one people with eating disorders who not only believe that the initial anti-hero music video wasn't fat phobic but also post their opinions about that in the tags related to fat phobia and fat liberation can lose their life savings i have seen this shit so many times now while just trying to find posts about the deadly oppression i face i do not give a fucking damn that you feel fat guess what i am fat and your and society's fat phobia negatively affects me every single fucking day I don't have the luxury of living in a thin body that is catered to at every second of the day by every aspect of society and media. You feeling fat means shit all. And you do not get to put your own feelings over the systemic oppression of fat people. And you encourage when you uncritically talk about feeling fat. Fuck you. Was Did Marissa write this? So, one... Oh my god, where was it? The deadly oppression I face. Again, victimhood, martyrdom, no one's life is as hard as theirs. I do not give a damn that you feel fat. Guess what? I am fat. So fucking what? That doesn't change the fact that someone can feel fat. That doesn't change the fact that someone can have body issues around weight. Negatively affects me every single day of my life. Again, martyrdom. No one's life is as hard as theirs. Tell me. Tell me how, it, like, outline your day and at what point you experienced this deadly, horrible, negative effects of oppression due to fat, fat phobia. Please, please, I would love to, for you to outline it for me so I can understand where every single day you experience this horrible oppression. I do not have the luxury of living in a thin body. No one gets the, well, very few people have the luxury of living in a thin body. Most people work for that thin body and get to enjoy the spoils of their effort. You feeling fat means shit all and your feelings, you do not get to put your feelings over the systemic oppression fat, fe fat people pay face. I don't think that fat people experience systemic oppression. I think a lot of what they experience is the consequences of the choices that they've made. There is some harassment and bullying that they can um, experience for sure. And occasionally dismiss dismissed from medical professionals. Yes. But I don't think it's systemic oppression. To me, they just use that to be on par with racism. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because people can't change their race, but you can change your weight. On that note, I'm ending it here. This is meant to be a pretty quick video. So I just want to end it here. Uh, looking at Patch, I pretty much told you guys as much as I can about her. She doesn't like me. She doesn't uh, isn't really fond when I take pictures of her. Uh, if you remember in my old videos with the hissing cat, that is Patch. And uh, that's all I have. That's all I have for today. Oh, no, wait. Nope, I have something more. So I wanted to highlight some positive things in the community this week. Uh, one is from Dismarat. Who says, I've gone from 280 to 215. My lowest adult weight. I'm dating a really great guy and doing better about getting to work on time. One of my friends is encouraging me to start the business. I've always wanted to of making accessories in fashion for people with very visible disabilities. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. So, oh, yay. I'm so happy for you. Getting to work on time can be hard. <laughs> I understand that. Good job. And holy shit, this is I'm trying to I'm trying to do the math, but I'm not 65 pound loss. 65 pound loss. Good fucking job, my guy. Or I, I'm sorry, I say my guy just in general. Good job. That is awesome. And uh if you do end up starting that business, like if it's an Etsy business or if you have your own um, website, please post it because I'd love to see it. That is awesome. And we also have Chloe. I'm a junior in high school. 
and just found out I'll be able to graduate next semester. It's a huge accomplishment for me because I've always struggled with school due to severe anxiety and body image issues. I spent four months of my sophomore year in a residential treatment facility for anorexia. It's so freeing to know it will all be over soon. Yay! That's a huge accomplishment. That is a huge accomplishment to be able to graduate a year early. Like, good job. You mu You worked really hard for that, and I'm glad you're doing better. I'm glad you got some help and you're doing better and things are looking up for you. I wish you both good things in this next year and I hope your life continues to have these positive moments. Uh, this is actually something I want to do on a weekly basis so I'll probably start putting up posts on the community tab every week to get some positive things to share in the videos. I like sharing positive things at the end of these videos to kind of counteract the toxicity that is fat acceptance. So thank you both for sharing and I'm going to end it here. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.